Welcome to part two of my attempted cycle tour of Iceland's ring road. In part one, we ended in the northeast and we'll pick up right where we left off. I now had 10 days to cycle to Reykjavik and was excited about seeing some of the country's most iconic locations. On day nine, the bus had saved me two days of cycling. To reach Bredalsvik on day 10, I could have chosen to stay on route one and tackle a mountainous climb, but I opted for the coastal route, which was longer but flatter. In 2017, Iceland changed route one to the route which I took, mainly to stop tourists taking the more dangerous mountain route in the winter. Day 12's ride took me around a fjord to the small town of Dupivoga. It was spitting rain as I came in, but this eased off and I really enjoyed my time here, walking the rugged coast and enjoying the nice campsite. Next up, I was traveling to one of the largest towns in the southeast. Spelt Hoffen, it's actually pronounced something more like Hupna. I wanted a full day here to explore, and as I'd added some miles in the previous days, I took advantage of a shuttle cab leaving early from Dupivoga. The town's famous for its crayfish, which you should definitely try if you're here. The cheapest way is in a soup or on a pizza, which tastes amazing with a local beer. On day 14, I was headed for the famous iceberg lagoon of Jokulsalen on my way to Skaftafell. And from here on, I was joined by my good buddy Dave, who'd flown in to join me on the ride back to Reykjavik. just woken up to a st stunning morning here. We're just shy of Svartifoss waterfall, which I've wanted to photograph since I got here. I'm really excited about today. I've got company, sun's out, got some porridge on, all is good. I have no idea who this dog belongs to. <gasps> Hello, girl. <gasps> yeah, I wish I could play all day. Uh, I'm pretty sure you belong to someone. So the last day of riding along the south coast has been so different to the beginning of this experience that I can almost not believe that I'm on the same trip. This is such a great location. Um, on our way to Jökulsárlón, we've got about 40 miles to push out today, so not, not too far in conditions like this, and hopefully the roads and the wind are on our side. Let's get going.
from Skaftafel with a strong wind behind us, we were pretty much blown all the way to Kirkjubeya. The next day we enjoyed the same conditions on the way to Vik, cycling at over 20 miles an hour on the flat. The town of Vik is famous for spotting puffins which nest in its steep cliffs. I've never in my life seen more seabirds than I saw here and on the neighbouring beach of Reynesfjara. From Vik, we really felt like we were on the home stretch, but first we were taking in two very famous waterfalls at Skogafoss and Seljalandsfoss. On the last day of cycling, Iceland's weather gave us some really heavy rain, but delivered a surprise that you couldn't have written into a movie. I hope you enjoyed following me along there and if you do have any questions or you're planning a trip like this for yourself do do put them into the comments and I'll do my best to help out because I learned a lot from planning this and I will do things differently next time I, I plan and take on a trip like this. Um, something I, I do think is that on an extended trip like this you start to find your your physical fitness and your mental fitness as it goes on. Um, I, I think regardless of how much training you do it's not quite there at the start and it was I was starting to feel that towards the end but I still think I was a bit naive to expect that I could combine the, the cycling with filmmaking and photography and have the energy to go off on hikes in the evenings and, and things like this it was really really hard I mean you could see like uh, the beginning part certainly like the I, I was struggling um, but it got better um, and actually you know, I had company at the end, which was also, you know, uh, you can share the, the tough moments, but it, the cycling was easier. We had the wind behind us. Um, it was every bit as rewarding an experience as I thought it would be. And uh, it, it was just a different one, which I think is probably always the way when you plan something like this. Um, but yeah, it, it's, it, it's something I would love to do again. And I'm excited to kind of look forward to the next one now. 
I did put quite a lot more information on my website, including everywhere I stayed and a lot of uh, a kind of a diary of the trip. So um, you can read that there if you're interested in finding out more um, or just you know write to me on here. Uh, if you enjoyed this, please do hit like and subscribe because that helps me a lot. Uh, in a couple of weeks, I'll be sharing an interview I did with Alistair Humphreys, who's the guy I mentioned at the beginning of all this, who got me started thinking about doing it in the first place. He's a really interesting guy to talk to and I'm looking forward to sharing that with you. In the meantime, thanks for watching and uh, yeah, I look forward to sharing more with you soon.